A new study says Ohio University students don't care for university athletics. Six OU students are charged in a fake ID scandal. And a local high school is improving its facilities. From Ohio University, you're watching WOUB2, television for Athens County. winter storm could drop more than a foot of snow in parts of Oklahoma. Good afternoon. I'm Emily Hanford. And I'm Gabriella DeLuca. Millions could be affected by the storm and we could feel the impact here as well. Matt Rosante in with us with a first look at weather. Matt? Well that's right ladies. Oklahoma isn't the only place that's going to be affected by some difficult weather. Uh, let's take a look at the Ohio radar right off the bat. We can see nothing going on right now. Things are okay but if we take a look at the country radar, we see that there's going to be some precipitation coming up from the, from the Midwest, a little bit farther west there. And that's what's going to be bringing what will eventually lead to some difficult conditions here in Athens later on today. We're going to see some freezing rain after, later on in the evening, which could eventually lead to uh, some freezing uh, roads, some ice on the roads, which will be hazardous, so we'll keep an eye on that. So if we take a look at the rest of our day planner, we can check it out that today, 33 right in the afternoon, uh, later this evening around 9 o'clock is when we're going to be seeing temperatures dipping a little bit below the freezing line there. The freezing lane rain will begin, and that's when we're going to see some, some difficult hazards. So uh, we'll take a look at more of the weather later on uh, here on Midday. Back to you guys. Thanks, Matt. We've heard a lot about athletic spending at OU from faculty and administration, but what about students who are actually paying the tab? A national organization asked students how they felt about the current spending percentages on the athletics program. Liz McKinnon is live in the Athens Midday Newsroom to tell us what students think. Students at OU are currently paying more than $750 a year to fund college athletics. The recent survey here on campus has found that the majority of students don't know how much they're paying. The ongoing war between athletics and academics continues. The latest attack comes from the Center for College Affordability and Productivity in Washington, D.C. It surveyed Ohio University students and found most don't support paying so much for athletics. When Ohio University students pay $765 a year for something that many say they don't support, um, I think that's really the bigger issue. The study found that 54% of students think athletics are extremely unimportant at OU. This can be a problem with more than 65% of the student fee funding athletics. It's unfair that they're getting so much paid for by our money and we're not getting anything out of it. And more than a third of students surveyed said they don't get any for their money not attending any athletic events during the year. I don't think we're, personally, don't think we're spending too much money on athletics. You have to spend money in order to make money. College athlete Atunji Adipipe supports the decision to continue athletic funding. And we spend less money than some of the Division I AA schools. And we're supposed to try to compete at a Division I rate. Faculty Senate member Steve Hayes disagrees. I think that's appallingly too much. Students are being taxed between 15 and 16 million dollars every year to cover the losses of intercollegiate athletics. Thank you. OU spends less than 5% of the university's annual budget on athletics. Live from Athens Midday, I'm Liz McKinnon. Athens High School will begin work soon on a synthetic turf and running track for its football field. The field was damaged when a tornado struck Athens in the plains in September. The school decided to turn the disaster into an opportunity to improve its facilities. Supporters such as the organization Bulldog Blitz have raised over $800,000 for repairs. The turf installation will mean that Athens High School can have a regulation soccer field and permanent yard lines for the first time. The project is expected to start in the spring. A water main break on North Court Street has been repaired. The 30-year-old pipeline split open near Stevens Restaurant last night. Crews were able to place a clamp on the line and say the repair should prevent future breaks there. Pipeline breaks are common this time of year when temperatures change frequently. 
Crews fix pipeline breaks about 75 times each year at a cost of $500 to $1,000, depending on the size and depth of the pipe in the ground. There is no boil order for the area since the pipe was fixed quickly. A major shipment of heroin into our area has been seized by Athens County Sheriff's deputies. The Narcotics Enforcement Team arrested Jared Shumway of Nelsonville after finding 82 balloons of heroin in $2,000 in his possession. Deputies also seized a car in Shumway's possession. Shumway had two outstanding warrants against him. The vehicle and the drugs were found on Route 33. Shumway will appear in Athens County Municipal Court tomorrow and in Hawking Court on, in April. City Law Director Pat Lang says he does not support pay raises for some Athens office holders. Athens City Council already approved a small pay raise for, for the mayor, law director, and city auditor. But according to the Post, Lang will not accept the pay raise if re-elected in November. So far, Lang faces no challengers for his seat. He says if re-elected, he will return any raises to the city treasury. Hazing and other incidents have put Ohio University's fraternities in the news recently. Athens Midday's Katie Donaldson talked to those in Greek life about these incidences and how fraternities in trouble are dealt with. Organizations like sororities and fraternities, specifically ones with a lot of members, operate with a lot of risk. We talked to leaders of Greek life to learn what consequences come with that risk. Whether they're victims of vandalism or involved with a fight, Ohio University fraternities are getting attention this year. Sigma Phi Epsilon was recently in the news because two of its members were in a fight, ending in criminal charges. No matter the incident, graduate assistant to Greek life Dustin Page says fraternities are under constant watching care. And then we also kind of work with them on the disciplinary actions. So that can include everything from risk management um, to, you know, how to respond in an incident um, that might happen. Or it could be, you know, why it's important not to do certain actions, whether it be hazing or alcohol abuse or something along those lines as well. So. And Paige commends Sigma Phi Epsilon for holding the members involved responsible. I think the chapter's done a great job trying to hold their members accountable. Um, and I think in any other situation, it would have just been an individual versus individual scenario. Fraternities are not only held accountable by Ohio University in their national headquarters, they also have to abide by state and federal law. Athens police say fraternities get in trouble most often for hazing. Essentially, it's initiation by an organization. Uh, it's a misdemeanor of the fourth degree, which is punishable up to 30 days in jail and a $250 fine. Hazing is not only against the law, but for members of fraternities, it's embarrassing. And if you're in a fraternity that hazes, I think uh, it really ruins your credibility as a Greek organization, and it kind of, uh, it's almost, it's, it's embarrassing if your fraternity was to get caught doing something like that. The Athens Police Department says it can charge individuals or an entire fraternity depending on the hazing incident. Reporting live for Athens Midday, I'm Katie Donaldson. Ohio University Police have charged seven students with having high-grade fake IDs and one with forging them. Sophomore Vincent Vendetti is charged with six counts of forgery, a misdemeanor. Police say Vendetti ordered and distributed the fake IDs to six underage students. OUPD got a tip from the Customs Office in Cincinnati that it had intercepted a package from Hong Kong. The package contained 20 high-grade false driver's license and was en route to Sergeant Hall on West Green. OU students around the campus say they're not surprised about the fake ID case. KD and get away with it. Um, I think it's kind of the responsibility of the bars to start cracking down more. I think it's pretty crazy that you would go all the way to Hong Kong to, to get fake IDs. I feel like people usually get them from here, so... I Each of the six students who received a fake ID faces one count of possession of a false driver's license. A guideline draft for OU's transition from quarters to semesters has been released. The draft focuses on issues that students will have to face when the change happens next school year. The transition degree completion plans emphasize the two main goals of the transition. It says that students will not be delayed in completing their degrees and transition students will not face increased costs. The OU community is able to make suggestions to be added to the draft until February 7th. An unusual witness will be testifying against an Albany man who led law enforcement on a manhunt from Vinton to Meigs County. Jack, a canine officer from the Gallia County Sheriff's Department, will show his battle wounds after allegedly being stabbed in the neck by Kelly Krebs. Krebs is accused of stealing a Vinton County police car and kidnapping the dog. 
then stabbing him. Jack was transported to the Ohio State Veterinarian Hospital. He will be testifying, testifying while wrapped in bandages. Jack is expected to be back on the job in about 10 weeks. Krebs' bond is set at $1 million. A potential 2012 presidential candidate was in Ohio this weekend. We'll tell you what he talked about. And two plane crashes in the United States over the weekend, one in our region and the other sending a California man to the hospital. There is no let up today in the protests against Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak. Thousands of demonstrators continue to call for his resignation. More than 100 people are dead and thousands injured in clashes with police. The Egyptian army was called in to help reduce the violence. This is the first time in a generation that the army is stepping in to solve civil disputes. The former United Nations nuclear chief is acting as a negotiator between Mubarak's regime and opposition groups. Citizens are demanding change and job reform to make their lives better. England. So people in Egypt want to leave this country because they are very frustrated and they are looking for better life, for better future. I don't think at this, I think there's enough momentum at the moment that people will just continue to just go out and protest until something is done. Um, I think people are just fed up. This is the seventh day of protests in Egypt. And the protests aren't limited to Egypt. About a dozen people held signs and chanted at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque over the weekend. Signs called for a free Egypt and students shouted, we demand democracy now. They need our support now more than ever. Um, I think it's important for everybody to come out and uh, voice our opinion, our opinions as Egyptians. I'm very sad that I'm not over there right now in the streets with them, uh, but I'm very proud that they're doing that. The protesters say they would rather see government change achieved in Egypt through dialogue instead of violence. A small plane crashed near the Lawrence County Air Park yesterday afternoon. The pilot, Scott Bell, and his wife, Carla, were the only ones on board when the plane crashed into trees. The couple walked away from the accident, but were taken to St. Mary's Hospital to be checked over. Both of the Bells are alert and conscious. The pilot and a passenger both survived another plane crash yesterday in Southern California. The pilot climbed out of the wreckage and the passenger was not injured. After the pilot made it out of the plane, he was airlifted to the hospital. Witnesses say that the plane could have clipped a tree as the pilot was trying to return to the airport. The cause of the crash is under investigation. The local fire department said the pilot may have had engine trouble. Minnesota Governor and Republican Tim Pawlenty spoke to more than 400 Republicans at a breakfast in Cincinnati over the weekend. Pawlenty is considering running for president in 2012. He says if he runs, his campaign theme would be restoring the country's prosperity by restoring common sense. Pawlenty told the group he has a good record with winning Democratic and independent voters. Volcanic eruptions continue today at Mount Shinmo in southwestern Japan. People living near the volcano can't leave their houses without masks because of the plumes of volcanic ash. The volcano is spewing rocks as far as five miles. University of Tokyo researchers report there is a lava dome in the center of the crater, but say there is no risk of lava spilling out. All flights to and from the local airport because of the ash have been canceled. Matt Rosante joins us with an updated look at the weather storm coming our way. And in sports, a matchup of two of the best club hockey teams in the nation this past weekend. We'll tell you how Ohio University's skating Bobcats did on the ice. <laughs> 